So good evening. This September 3rd meeting, open meeting of the Conservation Commission is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth through the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we have been directed to suspend public gatherings and stop the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order, which you can find posted with agenda materials for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the participants of the meeting. For this meeting, the Conservation Commission is convening by Zoom as posted on the agenda, uh, which can be found on the kind of website. Um, please note that the meeting is being recorded and that attendees are participating by video and or telephone conference. Um, meeting materials were provided to the board members uh, prior to the meeting for review uh, and uh, applicants or the representatives may be called upon to speak and if needed share information to the screen. Please state your intention to do so after you've been called. Um, to do before we turn to the first item of business to ensure accurate meeting minutes i the ch i the chair will introduce each speaker on the agenda after we conclude their remarks the chair will go down the line of members inviting each by name to provide any comments questions or motions please hold until your name is called further please remember to mute yourself uh, when you're not speaking uh, please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate minutes Please be aware that video participants can see you and that you should take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. If any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. Board members should be called upon in first name off the back order to use the process. If board members wish to engage with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify you. Uh, after the board members have spoken, the chair will afford the public comment as follows. The chair will seek questions through the raise hand function. Uh, for video conference participants, this function can be accessed by clicking on the participants option listed in the menu below the photo gallery. Uh, when the window will open and display on the right. On the bottom of this participant area, you will see the list of full video participants. And on the bottom, you will see the ability to click on the button to raise hand. Please ensure your name is displayed uh, and then list your name, address, and um, telephone participants can use their phone, keypad, or on the Zoom meeting to raise their hand by hitting the nine. Uh, the chair will then seek questions from the public when it's hit the raise hand button. In the order of which they're listed, uh, the participants will be called on to identify their name and address and then the question. The chair will afford the applicant or the representative the opportunity to reply. Your hand will be lowered when you have been given the floor for your question. Uh, the board will continue down the list of those in the raise hand column again for the applicant or wrap an opportunity to speak. Should there be a physical or electronic submittal of questions and concerns, they will be read for the record and again the applicant or the will be afforded the opportunity to speak if the issue raised does not open the gap. Uh, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by a roll call vote. And that is our opening preamble. So we are all to Move along. Let's see. Grab up. So let's open up uh, Triple Q Inc. This pair of John Calatoni, Calatoni Crossing, off of Main Street, DP number 0501326. A continued NOI to construct a new road, creating utilities and stormwater management features for a five lot residential subdivision. Work is proposed within the resource area and within the 100 foot buffer zone to the wetlands resources area. And just for the sake of argument, uh, does anyone want me to sort of open the other five as well, since we don't seem to be very good at staying within the lines? Probably just sure, why not? That you're open. Yeah, all right. So let's just do that again. So then, um, we are going to do Triple Q Inc. Here with John Calatoni, uh, lot one, two, three, four, and five of Calatoni Crossing, also in Lake Main Street, which are DEP numbers 050, 1325, 1324, 1323, 1322, and 1321, respectively. 
um, which represent lot one, two, three, four, and five. All right, so everything's perfectly open. Uh, let's go to Bill Manuel. Why don't you start the uh, the updates? Okay, uh, John Colin Tony's going to uh, start us off here. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Thad Berry, our engineers here, and then of course Bill Manuel, wetlands expert. Um, and before I start, I got to say to Ben, out of all the Zoom meetings I've been in the last two or three months, your background is is unbelievable. It's like it's like a commercial. It's, it's amazing. Um, yeah. So, so we're yeah. really excited. Um, <laughs> we're in front of planning um, last night. Um, and uh, it's just a matter of getting to planning the definitive plan, uh, the whole, uh, you know, the cul-de-sac is now the 60 foot for the fire department, uh, the 14 foot driveways, the Y for the common driveway, uh, you know, big enough for the, the truck, and then the one driveway that's about 250 feet, the turnaround for that. So everything's set, the planning board last night um, started talking about uh, getting the um, uh, the wording, you know, for what I call for the, the vote in the future. It's just a matter of us submitting the final plans so it can be distributed to the departments. Um, so I think we're, we're pretty good there. Uh, before we submit the final plans, obviously, we don't want to do two or three different plans again. We wanted to fine tune some of the things uh, with the Conservation Commission. Um, so maybe we can just submit one set of plans that keeps everyone happy where we're that close. Um, with that said, I'm also excited about some of the things that uh, the last time we met with the commission, you brought up in regard to uh, percentages of work um, uh, in the uh, buffer zones. Uh, you know, we have an answer for that. Uh, a crane drawing on if the road got moved over, you wanted sort of a rough draft for that. Uh, we have that, uh, and then more importantly, showing you uh, what we're going to be submitting with the 60 foot uh, cul de sac. Um, and the best of the last, you really were asking could we uh, tweak some of the houses and stuff uh, to get some of the work out of the buffer zone? And the guys did a lot of work with that, and I think you'll be extremely happy. Uh, what you'll what you'll see with that so we're hoping by the end of the meeting tonight that um we can be walking with our marching orders that we put the final thing together for a possible vote at the next commission uh meeting with that said i'd like to turn it uh over to bill and thad starting with bill uh, to go over some details uh and then to thad so thank you okay uh bill hold can i uh, start sharing my screen Yes, I made you a co-host to be able to do that now. All right. Uh, I'm getting better at this, so everybody can see that plan on the screen. Yep. All right. So uh, the general layout hasn't changed, but I just want to go through some of the things that, that have changed. And the first was uh, you gave us some marching orders to uh, – see what we can do to nip and tuck as the, the phrase was a couple of weeks ago. So I want to walk you through each of the lots. Uh, lot three, we were able to uh, tighten up the limit of clearing. So uh, we were able to gain some ground there uh, in this area. Lot. Also thought that on lot three, we picked up here, here, and over here. So here, we picked up space here on the back part of the lot, and the front right and here. in the front part, right in there. On lot four. The house was flipped so that the garage is now on this side of the house. And that allowed us to shorten up the driveway by about 35 feet. And so that was pretty significant. And you can see that the house is now pushed outside of the buffer zone. 
So uh, that was an op that was a big opportunity, a lot for to tighten things up. That allowed us to kind of crunch this limit of clearing up and uh, save some buffer zone clearing here. And then we also pushed the driveway over this way to get to get more buffer zone on this side here. Right, and we pushed the driveway north northwesterly so that we got a little bit more space on on this side. Now, lot five was kind of a wash. Here's the buffer zone line. The house is already nearly outside of the buffer zone. And we looked at what would happen if we pushed it a little further. And so the more you push it, the more this driveway has to extend to, to follow the garage. So it was essentially a wash. But we did, we did pick up some area. I regraded the front to pick up some area in here. Yep, and Thad's pointing, you can't see his finger pointing, but uh, he regraded the front yard, so we picked up a little bit of area in this part of the buffer zone. So overall, we picked up 13,000 square feet, more or less, of uh, decrease of work in the buffer zone. So we have gone from at the the first submission of the project we were at about 2.8 acres of work buffer zone uh we've with what you saw last week we got that down to about 2.6 and then with this nip and tuck exercise it's further reduced to about 2.3 acres of area of a project in the buffer zone so we've really crunched it up by a half acre from the beginning of the project. And that's a result of this good back and forth that we've been having. Uh, you've, the commission has had some good suggestions and it pushed us to uh, really drill down and look at the project uh, more closely. And as I said, we, you know, we picked up a half acre of improvement in uh, getting stuff out of the buffer zone. Uh, we did look at lot one. You had asked us to look at lot one, and really we, we didn't have a lot of latitude on lot one, primarily because of the septic system here. Uh, we could push this back about five feet at max um, because we need to stay 20 feet off the leaching field. Right now it's about 26 feet between the edge of the leaching field and the back of the, the structure here. So we, we could push that back a little bit if the commission were uh, so desirable of that. Um, lot two, there's not a whole lot we can do on lot two. Um, it has the stormwater detention feature in here and there just wasn't a lot that we can do. We, uh, so. But the, although we did preserve more trees in this area, yeah, um, so and, then, and then we also preserved more trees in this area and here. Uh, so Thad's indicating how uh, we preserved more trees in this area, and we tightened it up just a little bit here on lot one, and preserved a bigger patch of trees over here on lot two. Uh, so that's the, the nip and tuck exercise, and, and uh, you know, I, I think that was fairly successful. The, the next thing that, or the next big thing that came out of the meeting last week was the replication areas. And we walked the site with Brian and Bill Holt on Tuesday. And the, the results of the site walk were that uh, we thought that the replication area for lot four was in the best location. It is a fairly flat area and you know we were concerned that we didn't want to have to attack an area that had sloping topography because the, the more it slopes the more you're digging into the ground at the high end and you're getting into you know sort of a the deeper into the sea horizon which is generally not conducive for growing anything. So uh, we thought we liked the area for lot four. We did walk along the line and all the way back to the wall here on four. And we did walk all the way over here. Uh, and again, just kept coming back to lot four. 
Uh, one of the things, there are a few mature trees within the replication area, and we talked that, uh, we reiterated our conversation that we had from a couple of weeks ago, that we can dig around those, those root masses of the trees and try to preserve them. Uh, we didn't want to put, there's a couple of large trees right here, we didn't want to push anything that way, but we can try to preserve the large trees that were in the replication area. And uh, so you know, we're, we're willing to do that. And that's probably uh, something you can write in your order of conditions where uh, Bill Holt and I can meet on the site when we're getting ready to grub out these replication areas and uh, you know, we can mark out and direct the excavator what we want them to do. Now over on lot three, we had quite a bit of discussion. Um, we we uh, we talked about perhaps moving the replication over in this location. Uh, my concern was I, I didn't want to have to build or cut down trees and build a temporary roadway to get into you know this portion of the buffer zone or this portion or any portion along here uh, in, in order to build this replication area. And Brian was uh, favoring a situation where we would have some kind of buffer zone between the developed area, the pavement, and the replication area. And, and you know, he thought that was the best, um, the best scenario for the project. Uh, one thing we didn't talk about, Brian, was that this area, the replication area here, was over designed by almost a factor of three. The total fill between here and here was only 446 square feet. And we were giving you uh, 1100 and I forget what the number is, but uh, 1100 and change of replication area. So that was clearly over designed. And we don't have to build all of it. If, if I gave you uh, one and a half times the impact area, or around 670 square feet, this area that I have X'd out in red would completely suffice and, and then some for the replication area. And it would mm -hmm. leave a strip of upland here about 10 feet wide, right in this area. And you see this little triangle here, this was kind of an orphan of, of upland. And we figured, well, we'll just, we can uh, make that into wetland just as easy as well but we don't have to do that either. So we can leave after this is all restored, we can leave this little area of upland and we can build the replication area smaller and still achieve our at least one and a half to one and, and leave a, an undisturbed, well, a restored strip of buffer zone in this area. The alternative mm -hmm. we talked about for the rest of the commission members was uh, Brian had a good idea that uh, once this area for the turnout on lot three was constructed, we could basically the, the access way down to the edge of wetlands was kind of halfway built and it was going to be permanently disturbed anyway. So we could also uh, use this area to kind of get down into uh, a potential replication area in here. Uh, Brian, it's, it's your call. I mean, I think I have a pretty good innovative solution here, but uh, you know, it, there's, there's been a lot of give and take along the way here. And, and you know, I don't think we're gonna wanna die on the hill of wetland replication area for lot three. So whatever you think is, is appropriate, um, both areas for the commission members, both areas were relatively similar in flat topography. We noticed that the oak trees were severely impacted by the gypsy moth infestation a few years ago. So both areas had basically, even though they had very large diameter oak trunks in them, they were all dead on this side. Interestingly, they, they weren't dead on, on the lot four side, but they were dead on this side. So. Uh, we think we have a good solution here, but you know, defer to the commission members what they think, and we can certainly incorporate that into the, the final plans. And the last thing that you wanted us to take a look at was 
uh, hey, you know, do a couple hours of work and and give me a sketch of what it would look like if the road layout changed. So we did work on that. And I didn't exactly use crayons, but uh, it, it could look like that the way I, I've, I've got it. But I tried to altering uh, this PDF drawing. And basically what I did is I flipped the road. It, we it took off, you know, at the point of uh, curvature here, I just laid it back over and flipped it, kept the cul-de-sac where it always was because that's kind of a fixed point. And <laughs> you can see what it does. Uh, I had to leave enough land, enough frontage for lot five. So I gave lot five the minimum of frontage and everybody just remember these are rough drawings. If we got a, a CAD drawing and we had to, you know, fine tune it, we might pick up a little here and a little there and all, but uh, I think the gist of it's pretty clear. The same thing, I had to keep um, minimum frontage for lot four off the cul-de-sac. So now I'm looking, well, how do I recreate what was lot two? And so I, sort of recreated what, what could be lot two. And I would have to then, here's, we have soil testing sort of in this area. We would probably have to go back out and put test holes right in these leaching areas, these proposed leaching areas. That's what this red box is. Keeping 20 feet away from that, you see it jams the house right up to the edge of wetlands. And um, it, that's just, I think it's a worse scenario. It's clearly a worse scenario than what we have originally for lot two. Uh, lot two, we had a, a good separation uh, from the house to the wetlands across the road. We worked very hard to create this uh, vegetated strip along the roadway. And if we were to go to the high side, as I call it, uh, basically, that strip gets decimated in a bad way just with the maintaining clearing around the house and it pushes the house very, very close to the wetlands. So th that's the result. I mean, there's a hundred variations. I mean, th I think this was the, the best. I could have just gone straight through. Then you would have had less area to work with on lot two. But the point I want to make here especially is this is not even a legitimate lot this concept doesn't work because I can't get the required 30,000 square feet of contiguous buildable area. So I, again, maybe I could have, you know, maybe we could have stolen some frontage on for three over here and pushed this over, maybe picked up this CBA for, for this lot too, but it still doesn't work. I'm still 4,000 square feet short and we're just not gonna pick that up. So the answer to the question about what if is, it, it's a worse situation than what we have. And not to mention, it blows out the, the knoll and the, the tree area that we were trying to achieve, uh, save. So uh, that's what we, uh, that, those are the high points that came out of the last meeting, what you asked us to look into. And I'm gonna switch it back to the real plan and maybe we can have a discussion of the replication areas and uh, anything else you want to talk about. All right, excellent. Thanks, Bill. Um, that's all good work. It's all nicely done. Um, and you're right, if we'd had those numbers to talk about earlier about that replication area, we might have had a different discussion. And that's, you know, on the one hand, it's a shame that, you know, we're, we just noticed, so to speak. But on the other hand, we still had a good discussion. So, um, comes out in the wash, I suppose. Um, but yeah, that was all, that's a nice run through of everything. Um, regarding my opinion of the new replication area uh, thoughts, um, I don't have a clear preference for any particular thing. Um, you know, I could see a good argu argument for, you know, doing it as originally laid out and doing the whole thing as a wetland replication, 
and then you've got more wetland replication area to to get your 75 percent with you know if you have a, a bad bug infestation or something you still get your 75 percent you know but there's also a great argument for the buffer that you know we had out in the field um you know and the replicated wetland would end up serving as a buffer for the you know the, the near wetland would serve as a buffer for the further out wetland um you know so to me on a certain level it seems like six of one and half a dozen of the other a little bit um but um that's my only thought on that at the moment it's uh i'm playing ping pong mentally in my own head here um but everything else you know looks really nice you know picking up thirteen thousand square feet you know that's lovely um one a uh, question that I thought you might have um, done would have been to say uh, like that, the crayon uh, road, uh, you know, if we had gone that way, you know, how much more or less uh, impact might you have had compared to the, the 13,000 square feet you did pick up? Um, you know, I, I thought that might have been a comparison point you would have made, but, um, you know, that's just, you know, detail that um, I thought perhaps with the successful nip and tuck that you did that you would have ended up with more, uh, with less work in the buffer in the nip tuck than what you ended up impacting with the road. Did that make sense? Did I say that right? Um, I, I kind of lost that train of thought. That's okay. Uh, it, it's, um, it doesn't matter. Uh, but anyway, it's all it's all lovely work. So let's um, let's go around the horn and see who has what to say. Um, let's start with Ben. Ben, why don't you go? Yeah, um, I think I echo Brian's comments. Uh, really nice work on a short time schedule. Thanks, guys. Um, I am curious, Bill Manuel. You did say a total of two point three acres work in the buffer zone. Did you guys, um, we had some discussion last meeting about calculating that as a ratio of total work. So did you, do you know how much total work you're doing? Because I am curious to know, you know, what that ratio of work in the buffer zone to total work is. Yep. Uh, we have, the site is 8.2 acres. We have 3.9 acres of impacted areas, areas that are going to be graded, cleared. And uh, of that, we're down to 2.3 acres of work in the buffer zone. So it turns out it's a, that 58% of the work is in the buffer zone, but only 47% of the site is impacted. That was pretty good. I guessed, I think I said 60. You, you actually said 50, so you, you were close. I think I, I went down to 50 because you guys were pushing back, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take 40. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, thank you. I, it does provide a good frame of reference. I think, you know, um, we've had a lot of back and forth about relevant to what's going on with this project, what it means. I, I think moving forward, it's really informative for the Forward to see that ratio. So I appreciate the effort you took there. Thank you. Yeah, and, and the important takeaway is for a small site, you know, if you have a large site, it's easy to preserve lots of area, but for a small site like this, eight acres, more than 50% uh, of the site is untouched. Yes. Okay, so you're saying 3.9 of a total of 8.7. Uh, was, yeah, I mean, that's, that's it, it doesn't apply to this commission's jurisdiction, but yes. Yep. And, and just to reiterate, I mean, that was the overall, remember at the very, very beginning when John said, you know, what his vision was for the, the subdivision, it, he wanted it to be a tree filled subdivision. He didn't want to go and, and clear out the, the entire area and make big cleared lawns. So, uh, we, you know, we started out in sort of in that vision and we've even got a little bit better. 
Cool. Excellent. So Ben, you good? I think so. I'm, I'm still playing ping pong as you are um, with the ultimate site of the replication area. So I'll step back on that and see if anybody else has an opinion. Okay. And yeah, Ben, just to sort of reiterate what um, Bill was saying about the walk, they look like there was a stripe of um, like locusts had passed pass through. There were just like a line of red oaks almost in a almost linear fa fashion. And it really did pass through the replication area on that uh, was originally put down. Uh, and then another section where we were looking at and it continued across the wetland and um, all all the other areas, there was, I think the smallest uh, height difference we were guessing would have been about three feet. Uh, and if we went over to lot uh, five, you know, probably would have been, you know, six or seven feet of difference in terms of excavation and further out over from lot four, um, down near the property line, you know, would have been into double digits for sure. Um, and so yeah. really, you know, in terms of thinking, you know, these, these other replication areas probably would have needed a retaining wall to not be buried by, you know, the next storm. So, yeah, um, I, even going from the plans, Brian, I, I liked where that was my, you know, I threw out some things last meeting, but I, I thought that the, as far as a minimal impact and moving it away from the road, the two options were where you guys settled up with on lot three or on changing your way out of the north side of, um, or sorry, the south side of lot four. Um, yeah. And so for me, I'm just thinking near term, short term, like, yes, right now, there's those red oaks are dead, but in 30 years, it's going to be different. And so I'm just trying to take a longer term perspective on w what's the better move. Right, right. And right now, that's, that's a little tricky on that one. I know what you mean. Um, all right. Well, I'll let you think for a bit. Uh, let's move down. Bill Lord, you got anything? Did you make it home yet? Was your video? Are you hearing? Yeah. There you go. Yep. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm impressed that the changes were made so quick and they're pretty much what we were asking about backing the houses out of the buffer zone as best they could. And, uh, you know, I think they addressed, you know, all or most of our concerns. So I'm good with it right now. All right. Thank you. Uh, Daniel. Um, I don't really have too much to say. I'm just sort of looking at the lot three replication and it, sort of if i'm reading looking at the map correctly it sort of makes sense to do it where it's currently shown to me because it's it's some kind of it's it's upland that's sort of trapped in a whole wetland area it would seem to make sense to me to kind of make that a continuous that's really all i you know have an opinion about here everything else you know I'm impressed as everybody else is, so. Okay. All right, thanks, Dan. Uh, Peter, your turn. Um, I, you know, I, I'm looking to see what Bill Holt has to say, but, you know, uh, from a planning standpoint, we're comfortable, um, and uh, we've been working with the applicant, and, uh, you, know, you know, from a conservation st standpoint, I think they've done a good job of making some nice modifications, so uh, I have no, no further comments. All right. Um, and I'm just looking up and down the list. I don't see Kevin, but I do see um, Leslie Matthews. Um, I have on this there... particular time. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. Well then, um, thanks, Leslie. <laughs> uh, Bill Holt, do you want to chime in on anything? Yeah, actually, I I agree. It, um, they handled most of their revisions really well. Um, they were very attentive to what the commission had asked, and I think that's a, a pretty good design. I'd like to see the final range design. I, I think they indicated it didn't change a lot, but I know they increased the the uh, radius of the paved public sac, so I, I don't know if that has any impact on the drainage um, or not. I assume that they will uh, finalize the drainage and that Sunday Boards Consultant uh, will also be looking at that and reviewing the final design. So I'll just wait for the final design and do a final review. I think it's a pretty 
pretty good, pretty good uh, revised plan. So, all right, nice, Bill. Um, Ben, I'm gonna go back to you. Do you have any? This is that 30 seconds. Do you have any new thoughts about replicating? You're talking to me. Oh no, sorry, to Ben. Just to see if Ben had any new thoughts in that 30 seconds. No. Not really. I will take in the final design plans. I'll take the five feet that they offered on uh, lot one, though. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, yeah, let's see real quick. How does everyone feel about the, the five foot? Um, so Ben put a near vote. Uh, Dan, what do you think about the five footer? I think it's, it, it, I would just leave it where it is. I think it's going to be uh, just more driveway, more pavement. It's kind of on a hill there. So yes, I kind of just away from the line where it is. Okay. Um, Bill Lord? What do you think about the five foot move? I agree with Dan. Okay. And then Peter? There we go. In agreement. Uh, so then let's just, um, doesn't matter what I say. And I think that I feel this way about that the way I feel about the wetland. I, it, right now, I feel like that probably just comes out in the wash. Um, so uh, let's leave the house where it is without that feet. Um, Regarding the the wetland, uh, uh, Bill Brian, Manuel, do you have a yeah, Brian? Before you move off that point, so so what was the resolution of that discussion on leave the house on the house? Leave it where it is. Yeah, you got you got three uh, to one and one abstain. I suppose uh, just yeah, it's not worth the bother. It seems. Um, okay, thank you. The uh, the wetland replication. Uh, Bill Manuel, do you have any preferences one way or the other? Do you see any downsides one way or the other? Um, I, I, uh, well, I think Dan had an excellent point. I believe it was Dan about this being an island in the wetland. And from a success point of view, it's going to be a lot easier to, to turn something that's surrounded by wetland into wetland as opposed to digging something that's not wetland and um, you know digging into the upland. So yeah. that would be my preference in here. It's just a, a very easy replication area and that's what I would prefer. And I like it better because it's farther away from the house. Yeah, and the, um, you know, with the, um, you know, you're meeting the the requirements and exceeding them by building that space there. So, you know, I'm content with not moving it out of that space. Um, you know, my question really is, do you make uh, a constructed buffer or do you construct the whole thing as wetland um, and then let the the affected wetland you know act as a buffer you know like do you want to do you want to just leave it as is and have one big replication or do you have a preference to maybe shorten the replication area and you know sort of you know put in more upland species and sort of replace the island uh, the upland island next uh, to the driveway do you have a preference, preference on that my preference is going to be to replicate the entire area because Basically, to get here, you're going to have to disturb this. So it's just easy to, to pull that grade back and, and just make it all as wetland. All right. I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Do you have any uh, other thoughts, uh, Ben? Okay, and Thad, Thad is asking me, do, I mean, do you want us to convert this little area here on the other side of the road? Uh, from my perspective, I feel like, you know, if you're meeting uh, your numbers with the first side of the road, that it seems, you know, like it's such a small thing that it's going gonna, it's gonna to be harder to succeed there. Okay. And so rather than sort of setting up for a fail, 
Um, I feel like maybe just keeping the replication all on the one side of the road. Sounds good. Very good. I don't know. Do we have any uh, disagreements from the board? Anybody want to throw out another opinion? Okay. Um, and then let's see. All right. So that I think is good for that. Uh, before I move on, though, I just want to check in with uh, with Mrs. Matthews here. Do you have any particular thing you'd like to cover? Um, I just, uh, as far as like uh, Lot 3, where you were talking about the wetlands, I was, <clears throat> is it seasonal wetlands or is it continuous wetlands? And if it's continuous, are you going to put like a culvert to drain the water as you go when you put the, the driveway in? Uh, the last question first, yes, there will be a culvert, but this is kind of a, well, this area up in here is what we would call a shrub swamp. And in the springtime, it, you may see small puddles of water, but I was there in the spring flagging it and there was no surface water inundation. Uh, this was prior to the drought. Uh, but groundwater is going to be uh, at or just below the surface for uh, most of the year. Uh, so there's not really a lot of water flow that comes through here, but nevertheless, we do have a, a box culvert, a six foot wide by four foot tall box culvert to uh, act as both a critter passage and a, uh, an equalizer uh, between the two sides of the wetland. Thank you. Hey, Bill, is your phone still on in the house? Because I keep on hearing Diane and Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> Is, is something coming through that shouldn't? I think I, I see your phone is still, it looks like hooked in through the thing and that's where it seems like it's coming through. All right, so hey, Bill Holt, can you milk Bill Lord's phone? He, he got it, he got it. I just did. I no, you just unmuted it. Bill had muted it, okay. you just, Bill Lord muted it and Bill Holt just unmuted it. Oh. All right, well. <laughs> There you go. Okay, <laughs> so then um, turning to Bill Holt, uh, in term, it sounds as if we've run out of things to talk about. Um, do you want uh, uh, to wait on, um, you know, the, the drainage numbers you're talking about? Do you have an interest in keeping this um, sort of open while you look at that? Or would you be comfortable uh, doing that sort of after uh, a vote? I can um, do it either way. The pleasure of the, of the commission. I can, I can, um, you know, it might be better to keep it open and I can put them on for the subdivision portion of, of, the, um, of the project for the 15th if they think they'll be ready for then. Um, or yeah, I think we're going to talk about two meetings in October, so they could be on the first meeting in October if they would uh, are not would not be ready by the fifteenth, which is uh, two weeks from now. I, I'm more comfortable voting on final plans, anyways, Brian. Yeah, I just wanted yeah. to make sure that was, you know, because I was Bill Holt's standing concern, and I know that sometimes we will um, approve things, you know, and if they come in okay, we you know, we let Bill, Bill Holt handle it. But, you know, I want to make sure we sort of defer to Bill's preference on this one. Um, okay, so then, um, and Bill Manuel, that sounds okay, sort of keeping it open and just for that, uh, that detail, but it sounds like we don't have anything else to talk about. Uh, John's going to weigh in. Yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure I understand, so I apologize. So uh, by the end of next week, uh, September 10th, 
uh, give or take a day, uh, all the final plans will be submitted. Um, so does that mean that we could possibly have a vote um, on the September 15th meeting? Um, because it's basically going to follow what we, you know, what we showed you tonight. I, I, I know uh, Bill Holt has to, you know, sort of review it and stuff, but uh, is that possible? Yeah, I think it, I could, if, it, if I get it next week, I can have it reviewed by, by the 15th. I, I, don't, I don't know if the planning board, I know it, it, uh, Joe Sawaka was looking at it too as well on the planning board side. Um, you might want to talk to him and make sure he can get it done by, by our meeting as well. Uh, when are you going back to the planning board? I we're on the planning board on October 7th, but I'm not, I'm, I'm not really worried about the planning or conservation. We got our marching orders from both boards now. Um, so to me, they're, they're separate. So if we get the conservation vote on the 15th, as long as you know, you're know you happy, uh, Bill, when you, when you, you know, see the final plans, um, you know, the planning is going to have to do what they have to do for October 7th. So, you know, if, if something got changed or whatever, and we have to come back, we have to come back. But at this point, we feel pretty comfortable with both boards on what they want. Um, and we feel that we can make both boards happy now that we, you know, have the full story, if that makes sense. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm okay with that. If, if, they, uh, want, if, they, if they can get it to us by next week, I can review it and go back on the 15th and close out the subdivision roadway portion of the, of the filings. Um, we do have a pretty good agenda, so I don't know if we want to tackle the five other lots at that meeting. We might want to postpone those for the, for the following one. Um, I think, uh, from my perspective, that would be a good way to sort of break it up so you keep things moving, but we don't, you know, fill up things we're not going to do uh, necessarily. And what I think might also be useful, uh, Bill Holt, is if um, we can get the, the wetland replication specific orders written up prior to uh, anything so that we didn't have a chance to sort of chat them out here. So, you know, um, uh, we can work through some of those finer points, you know, from that uh, that earlier draft from a month ago or whatever that was. Mm -hmm. uh, and we can all sort of have that in agreement sort of in this uh, context. Uh, so if we can, yeah, if we put the roadway on for the 15th and then we wait till whatever the next one is for the lots, that sounds, uh, that sounds good to me if that works for uh, um, John and Bill and Thad. That, that would... That would be great. We'd really appreciate it. That'd be great. Yep. Okay. Um, all right. And then just one last round. Any uh, comments from the commission? Any anybody else want to uh, have a say about anything? Going once, going twice. Okay. All right. So then let's have a vote to. Uh, let's have a motion to continue the roadway to the fifteenth. And then let's have, and then uh, Bill Holt. What are the what's the date after the fifteenth? October something. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at. We have two choices. We could do October sixth and twentieth if you want to do two meetings in October, or we could do October thirteenth and twenty seventh. So it depends on how you want to stagger them. Hmm. I vote six and twentieth. Okay. Any any disagreements to Ben? Going once, going twice. Okay, so yeah, let's continue the, the five lots until the six. Okay. And All right. the six will be a regular hearing, right? Starting at seven? Yes. Okay. And the 15th would be. Six. Yes. All right, very good. So um, do I have a motion? Motion to continue as discussed. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Excellent. All right. Uh, roll call, Benjamin? Yes. Bill? Do 
Did we lose Bill? Bill Lord? Bill's muted. He gave the thumbs up. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> um, Daniel? Yes. Peter? Yes. And I will also vote in the affirmative. All right, right. great. Thanks. Excellent work. Thank yeah, you very and, much for uh, time. And thank you again, Bill and Dad. That was, um, that's a much, that's a pretty plan. And you guys put that together real fast. And uh, I do want to sort of put a special thank you out for uh, the crayon drawing. Um, <laughs> it, it, it did, it had its intended effect. I feel like I understand uh, what I wasn't seeing much better than I wasn't understanding it before. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, and uh, with that, um, I, unless anybody has anything else to say, I am happy to hear a motion to adjourn. I'll offer a brief reminder to the uh, rest of the board that any comments on bylaw, um, the bylaw discussion we're going to have should go to Bill Holt by the 10th, so uh, one week from today. Thank you, Ben. Good reminder. And I'll motion to adjourn. Second. Even better. Oh, in a second. All right. Roll call vote. Ben. Aye. Bill. Thumbs up, I presume. Thumbs up. There it is. Um, uh, Daniel. Yes. Kevin. No, not Kevin. Peter, Kevin's not here. Peter. Yes. And also in the affirmative for myself. Uh, excellent. All right. Well, good job, gang. That sounds, this looks good. And um, we will see you all next time. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Good night.